the UK has the highest teenage pregnancy rate in Western Europe and a rising number of sexually transmitted infections. A 2003 Health Development Agency report concluded that a high standard of sex and relationship education won't stop teenagers having sex, but that they might delay it and that they're more likely to use contraception. Shoreham in West Sussex is an area with high rates of teenage conceptions. We've come to one local school to see how they're tackling teaching pupils about the risks of sex. Kings Manor Community College assistant head Claire Barr is an advanced skills teacher for citizenship. She's responsible for sex and relationship education policy. SRE really should be taught from day one in education. Um, young babies um, very quickly become aware of them, themselves and their body um, and so it, sex doesn't actually start at a particular time. Um, so if it is normalised into all aspects of education that you know we have a body and we have different parts of body for different uses and different functions, how do we feel about different parts of our body in, in a wide context, um, then it doesn't become a big thing that's not talked about or guess what we're doing sex education in year nine, you know, it should be something that, that is incorporated all the time into everything we do. For Claire it's important that at King's Manor pupils are given more than just the biological information about sex. It's not just about the biology of sex because the big decisions that they have to make are very much about how they feel. 50% um, of, uh, of females regret their first sex experience, so by helping them with lessons and understanding what they you know, might need to know before they engage in sexual activity, that might help them make the right decisions for them so that they don't do things they regret. It's taken Claire four years to develop the school's SRE policy. Here we have a programme for each year group, uh, so every year group has um, an SRE section of their PSHD lessons and we work with the science department and the youth wing as well so we back up what we're doing in, in a variety of places. So the minimum that students have here would be um, six weeks in every year group. Today she's got an eye-opening class on sexually transmitted infections but her year 10 class don't know that's the topic yet. What I'd like you to do is to write the age at which you think you would like to become a parent. Okay? 20s, and I've got lower than 20. I've got 19. Right. Oh, sorry, yeah, 19 to 20. Thanks, Kelly. And the highest, 30. Anyone got higher than 30? Okay, so we've got a range between 19, 20 to 30, about a 10, 10 year age range. Okay, right, I'd like you to put that card and the pen just under your chair. And remember which chair you're sat on right now because you're going to come back to that chair after we've done an activity that involves moving around. When I invite you to, you're going to come and take uh, one of these plastic cups. Okay, now in the plastic cups is a liquid. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what's in them. I'll tell you at the end. The main activity is where all the students are given a cup. In the cups are water for most of the students and two have got citric acid in. The students don't know what they've got in their cup. You're going to find somebody in the room and you're going to ask them a question. So the first question is, who's got, find someone who's got the same hair as you. So you go to that person who's got the same hair as you and you write their name in the gap and when you've done that, when you've found someone, then you take your cup and you give them a little bit of your liquid and they give you a little bit of theirs. OK, first five people, if you want to come and grab a cup. OK, and then just come out the way. Right, the first question is find someone with the same hair as you. So when I say we're going to go, you're going to stand up and you're going to travel across the room and find someone, if it's not the same, similar hair to you, OK? Off you go. The pupils are then encouraged to move around the room, filling out the questionnaire and swapping the liquid in their cups. Make sure every name on your sheet is different. Don't use the same person twice. A lot of students are probably thinking, why am I doing this? What, what is in the cup? Um, so we use citric acid on purpose because if they do sip it, it won't harm them um, and it doesn't smell. So it's an undefinable liquid in there. 
Who has lost a friendly? The way that SRE is taught is vital. Um, students aren't going to remember things if they're talked at. So they need to practice learning, they need to develop skills, they need to talk to each other. And that involves laughing, that involves being embarrassed, that involves figuring out what you're comfortable with and what you're not. But that's all good experience for, for later on when they come to be in those situations themselves. In the class there may be people that haven't even started puberty, right through to people that are already sexually active. So for a teacher it's quite difficult to cater for all the needs. But the idea is with the whole programme is that at some point in the whole time they spend at school, they will pick out what is particularly relevant to them at that time and what they need to know. What do you think they imagine is going on now? Um, some of them have twigged that, that, we're, that we're talking about STIs. Um, some are quite enjoying it. I don't know if you've heard them sort of saying, oh, come and I'll water you. And um, I think they all think they've got water. Some of them think they've got water, so they're not quite sure how that's going to work. Um, but it will all become obvious when we, when we dip the universal indicator in and we'll see what happens. Once everyone has filled in their questionnaires, Claire reveals the point of the exercise. OK, how did you get on? Did you manage to get round most people in the room? Yeah. yeah? OK, great. Right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a small piece of a universal indicator. Right, so from science, what does a universal indicator do? It, like, shows you, like, uh, acid and alkali. OK. Level. Now, I don't want you to dip your universal indicator into your fluid yet, OK, because we're all going to do that at the same time. No cheeky dipping. Now, if I dip this in water, what colour would the universal indicator go? <laughs> Green. So let's just have a look. OK. Now, can everyone see that? Yeah. So what have I got in my cup? Acid. 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 So on the table, there were two cups of acid and all the rest were water. So you've done the activity and you've mixed fluids. If you've still got pure water, when you dip your universal indicator in, it will come out green. If somewhere along the way, somebody's given you some acid, then you'll dip, and as exactly as happened with mine, it will be a shade of between yellow and red. It's gone quite red. So it means it's acidic. Yep. It's gone red, it's got acid in it. When they see the results, they're really surprised. They can't understand how they had, they had water, or they thought they had water, and how so many people in the class have actually now got a substance that's a mixture of water and an acid. Greenish. Greenish, yep. So let's see, let's, let's have a show of hands. How many people would say they still had pure water? A couple of green ones, excellent. Right, what do you think is the point of doing that activity? Is it about like having sex or something and then getting something from someone else, mm -hmm. like HIV or stuff like that? OK, yeah. Good answer. Thanks, Simon. Who else had their hand up? Even though only two people started off with like the acid, yeah. it turned into like quite a lot of people, so it spread quite quickly across the classroom. Excellent. Only two people started with acid, and all but two people in the class ended up with some acid in their fluid. When she said it was about the acids being trans, uh, like being passed, passed around. around into each cup. I realised it was about sex education and HIV and yeah. sexually transmitted infections. Like then she's talking about like only two people and then putting the and then passing it on and how it gets passed on so quickly. Um, I think the, this method is really interesting because it's a it's a practical way of showing students how easily one person that's got an infection. They could have unprotected sex with, with one other person, but then that, that's now two people, but how that can quickly become four, six, eight, and, and how it escalates very quickly. This was more exciting, and it makes you actually realise what yeah. it's like. Yeah, because it's interesting just, an active lesson. It's boring and otherwise, for... with just a teacher standing you, in yeah, front of you. Yeah, if someone's just talking, you don't, you don't really pay that much in. attention. If you're doing something practical, then you're keeping an eye on what's going on that. And you understand what's involved. happening yeah. because you're getting involved and you're doing this. You're like, oh, yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> and you just get involved and you understand more, I think, than just all these words about you. Know, and she's like, yeah, OK, can I switch off? Yeah. If two people started with HIV, how could it so quickly spread to so many people? By using unprotected 
sex, like doing unprotected sex and yeah. not using condoms and contraceptives. Yeah, excellent. OK, so if people engage in risky activity, so having unprotected sex, then they can pass that infection, the virus, the bacteria, onto someone else. OK, but how come only two people started with it? And yet, nearly everybody ended up with it. Did those two people go to everyone in the class, do you think? No. So what's happened? Well, so they've given it to someone else, and that someone's given it to someone. Right. Only two people started with it, but after the second and third questions, all right, then so there was four people in here, then six people in here, OK, then eight and ten and so on. So the people that had acid spread very, very quickly. What advice would you give a friend who comes to you and says, you know, for whatever reason, over the weekend, sort of accidentally um, had unprotected sex. We stress really strongly that the students, if for whatever reason they do, um, are involved in unprotected sex or, or risky sexual activity, that they know where they can go and get help and that they know they should, should seek help straight away. If you're not sure, you'd definitely rather go there to find out whether you have got an infection or not, you'd rather know. Sometimes a person may have an infection, but they don't know they have it. And they don't know they've got the infection because it has no symptoms. No, I can try, I try, I try playing. We have very little paper-based activities. Um, well, sex isn't about paper, so uh, it's about engaging young people in activities that are relevant to them. So they can talk to each other, they can ask questions, they move around the room where possible, they um, have you know, work out um, solutions to uh, problems without having to write it down on paper. It's unlikely, you know, when a student leaves school that they're going to go back through pieces of paper and some notes to find out how they feel about someone or what they should do in a certain situation. It's quite a relaxed are, atmosphere, yeah, isn't it? And it's nice because you get to, to talk and you're still learning, but in yeah. a really good way. In an easier way, isn't it? Yeah. I find it easier talking about it rather than writing just down writing a piece down of paper. Reading from you don't get tested, stuff. there's no pressure. Yeah. You can't it's just spell for, it. <laughs> no, exactly. It's for your own benefit, really. Yeah. It's good. So right at the beginning of the lesson, we, you wrote down a number that you, th you think that you might want to become a parent. We're going to explore how come the numbers on your cards are much, much higher than the age at which most people become sexually active. Why do people have unprotected sex then before they want to become a parent? Because... They, uh, some people don't understand the risks that right. they're going through and they haven't been educated in that way. OK, so Zoe has, has, has hit on the point there, is people have unprotected sex not really thinking that they are going to become a parent. Right? But as we know, because we've talked about this, haven't we, if you have unprotected sex, you run the risk of you know, getting the, the female pregnant um, and contracting an STI. With each pupil maturing at a different rate, Claire is aware that some parts of the curriculum may not be relevant to individuals for many years. But she has long-term aspirations for her departing pupils. I really hope the students leave the school with a toolkit for life and in that toolkit they will have all the things that they need to form positive, long-lasting, stable relationships. So they'll be able to communicate effectively, they'll be able to know how they feel in different situations, they'll know how to protect themselves, they'll know how to minimise risks. <laughs>